Okay, let's look at some practice problems. So in this first problem, we're given this unstable system. Now it's not obvious to look at it, but you can go through and show the system is unstable. So x dot is equal to a x plus b u plus g times w. H is this matrix. Y is this matrix. And um, we can go through and just use a regular state feedback and observer or let's just 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 take a regular state feedback uh, without without an observer okay so using the place command I'm going to place the eigenvalues here for lack of a better uh, reason um, and the state feedback gain it gives me is this okay so I'm going to use this as kind of a, a baseline comparison uh, for so this is obviously going to make this closed loop system stable in this case the system is controllable so we can actually use the place command uh, controllable through B and so we can place the place the closed loop eigenvalues of the system associated with this um, just as a again as a baseline to see what happens and then we're going to go through and we're going to compute the algebraic Riccati uh, solution and get the state feedback gain from that. Okay. So notice in the process I form this Hamiltonian matrix. I compute the, the eigenvalues, the eigenvectors. I compute the P associated the solution of the algebraic Riccati equation from that. And from that I get the state feedback gain. And so notice I chose a gamma. It's like how did you get that? How did you get that value of gamma? Well by trial and error. I just kept lowering this or varying this. Uh, remember using the bisection algorithm? The bisection algorithm works in this problem too. So I used the bisection algorithm uh, to find this value of gamma. And, and from that value of gamma, I get this state feedback gain. OK, so I can apply the state feedback gain in, uh, in the original for, uh, using this state feedback gain, using this state feedback gain. And in each of those cases, I'm going to have a closed loop system, and I can evaluate the, um, the largest singular value of the transfer function. And this is what I get. So notice I have two. So this is for the state feedback gain, just where I place the poles. This is where I place the poles of, I'm sorry, where I used the H infinity solution. And so we notice that near and for low frequencies, these actually give us very similar responses. But at this frequency, for example, I can see that here I have a gain that is quite a bit higher than the gain here. And uh, so if I look at the maximum over all frequencies, which is basically what the H infinity norm gives us, um, here is the. Um, the maximum over all frequencies. I think in this case the maximum over all frequencies occurs at DC. Uh, and so the maximum over all frequencies is minus 12.55 dB here. So I've written this in terms of dB. That is I took, I computed the H infinity norm and I converted that to dB, that value. Um, so I can see it on the plot here. And so I can see the, the difference in H infinity norm is a difference of about um, 13, 14 um, dB, which is a significant amount of difference. So remember, when we place these eigenvalues, we chose eigenvalue places that seemed reasonable, that is, putting them all on the negative real axis. Um, and yet, that wasn't enough to guarantee a low H infinity norm when we actually close the loop. So the, the, the gain that we chose, uh, this gain, actually gave us a lower H infinity norm. So if we look at these gain values, these are pretty high values compared to these values. You know, 58 versus 1.22. So we can see that, that uh, 
there's a difference in, in magnitude and that difference uh, so those large values give, a, give us these nice poles but don't necessarily say anything about the H infinity norm whereas these large values I'm sorry these values are small so the values don't have to be large in order for the H infinity norm to be small so that's the state feedback problem for the output feedback problem now um, I form my Hamiltonian matrix my second Hamiltonian matrix so now remember we have two Hamiltonian matrices because we have two algebraic Riccati equations I solve for Q I check to make sure that that uh, the gamma squared is greater than the largest eigenvalue of P of the product PQ and then I compute my observer gain then I form the overall closed-loop system ACL BCL CCL okay and now from this I can look at the largest singular value of this transfer function as a function of frequency and so this red so we have the state feedback the original state feedback that we had the green is the original state feedback for the H infinity problem and the red now is the state feedback for the output feedback problem so so notice that the, the the red is above the green and you will always have that the state feedback is always um, going to be better than the output feedback not necessarily at all frequencies in this case um, it's clear that the state feedback is better at all frequencies but in general we will not have it being better at all frequencies it's possible that it can these guys can cross but the the difference is that the magnitude the largest magnitude so in this case I think this actually has a peak here uh, at minus 11 dB so again minus 12.5 dB is the state feedback solution and uh, so the uh, the output feedback itself does better than the, the just the basic state feedback solution state feedback controller so this then is the H infinity control problem.